Okay, so we are recording because we're trying that so that I can learn for like some summer um, online training that we want to do. I'm trying to learn how to do it through Zoom. So this meeting is going to be recorded and probably posted on the Facebook share group page just so everybody has that information. What, what is the um, what is that phrase you hear on the phone all, all every time? This uh, this call quality may be recorded control. for yeah, training for quality control. Quality. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, oh Mackie, I know you. How are you? Um, and Bruce, you're doing well. I hope. Yeah. Bruce, when does your school end? Um, we, tomorrow's our last official day with the kids, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then then I guess we're pretty well done. I think so. Okay, I'm trying to make uh, notices. I'm, I'm I'm trying to get information out to people before school ends. That's why I sent to Texas yesterday, but I guess I was too late. Um, uh, who is it, Kathy? You're already out of school. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. well, too late. Um, okay, I, the, my, my problem, I'll just mention this, uh, which you can mention to uh, anyone else you work with, um, is that um, all the schools uh, operate in different ways at different times and their emails are handled differently and some people use their emails over the summer, some people don't, their school emails, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very hard for me to um, contact people over the summer. But if they have contacted us at all, if they have sent us a email recently or um, you know something like that, then they uh, they will definitely get notices. Um, so uh, if you run into anybody who wants notices from us during the summer, tell them to just drop us a line. Okay. Okay. Now, Nancy. I'm sorry I didn't get to talk to Braylon more. Please, please tell her to, I apologize. My three and a half year old granddaughter is spending the night with us and she adores Mr. Stevenson from meeting him when he came to Texas, so. Oh, I didn't know she adored me. Yes, she talks about <laughs> meeting Mr. Stevenson. And so anyway, well, Also, no I have to explain to a few of you that have not seen this before, but uh, I sort of uh, inadvertently have the name Bubbles underneath my name. <laughs> <laughs> that is that, it's a long story it's a family <laughs> joke and you know and, and it's fine but it shouldn't be in my professional <laughs> <laughs> so i have to change my uh, account uh, in zoom anyway um now is there anything anybody wants to talk about first and if uh, somebody doesn't want to talk about something first, I have a few questions and suggestions. But first and foremost, questions from any of you, all of you. Hello? <laughs> well, my question would be, is there going to be a training in Texas next year before school starts or after? Um, Nancy. Yes. Um, we have not set up anything for a training for before school starts. I have some August dates blocked out, saved for you, but we haven't um, set anything up. We can set something up. Um, the problem we always have when we set something up ourselves is that, you know, all the people from north of Dallas or, you know, don't want to go south of Dallas and the people from, you know, Austin don't want to go to San Antonio or you know there's there's issues like that um, and so it's hard to pick a place where we actually get a good crowd uh, Nancy has done things just before school started in the last couple of summers but the attendance has been very small after a few years of it being very large um, and now that we're into a social distancing summer, I don't know if you guys are, I mean, I know the state of Texas is quote unquote open, but I don't know if there's still social distancing going on. Um, and so, you know, anyway, um, so if I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, on the fence about setting up a live training. Um, uh, but we certainly uh, want to have 
um, a recorded Zoom session uh, for people to see what they can do with Stevenson um, remotely uh, or during classes. And we, uh, I mean, Bruce and, and, and Lori and, and uh, uh, there's somebody else here. Anyway, uh, they're gonna help us out with that. Uh, but that's not gonna be a real training. So um, it was Kathy, did you ask that question? Who asked that question? Thank you. Okay. Um, do you think that, oh, have you, you've never been to a training, Kathy? I went to one in Longview and that's all. It was about a year or so ago. Yeah, I remember I was there. Okay. Uh, yes. Do you feel, what would you feel like you needed that you don't have? That you don't rem or is it just that you don't remember something from a year and a half ago, which is perfectly reasonable? Um, I think now, since I've had a year, you know, under my belt, that it would just be, um, I, I wouldn't mind repeating the same training now that I know what you're talking about and, and um, questions that I have about different things. I wouldn't mind having the same training or even training from beyond that, that, that first level. E either one I, I would go to. Um, this is my um, thought off the top of my head. Um, and um, it'll be, and Nancy and I will have to talk about this a little bit more since she's the one who's going to be doing the training. Um, <laughs> my thought is to send out an announcement to all of our Texas people tell them the situation. I'll probably have to send the announcement out two or three times because nobody reads their emails when I send out 2,000 announcements at once. It just, you know. Um, but anyway, and if, and I'll just say that we're willing to set something up. And if we get more than, you know, five people who uh, want us to set something up, um, and we'll have to, do, we'll have to choose an area because Everybody needs to know that. Everybody says they'll go to some place until they find out where it is. <laughs> um, anyway, how about I, that's my thought at the moment? Because I'll send out a notice if enough people bite. I will. I will assume that Kathy wants to go. And um, I saw so Leslie or Laura's face. Somebody was nodding. That they, it sounded like they did participate too. Yeah. Laura. I yeah. Well, you know, if you guys, uh, now, uh, Laura, where are you again? I wrote it down. Let's see. Dallas. Dallas with Carrie. Dallas yeah. and Carrie and Leslie, you're in Comanche. And Kathy, you're in Quinlan. Is, uh, do you know, uh, where's Quinlan in relationship to Dallas? Um, it is, <laughs> well, Greenville, I live in Greenville. I always ha have that question. It's 50 miles northeast of Greenville. Quinlan is about, uh, 20 minutes from Greenville, it's south. So Quinlan's gonna be more south of Dallas. About well, okay, that, well, that kind of answers my question is, the big thing, I, 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 it seems like the big difference is whether I go, we go south down near Waxahachie or we go north up near the airport. And we seem- Or we could go we, further out like Rockwall because they're like Kathy's well, out that side and Bruce is in Mesquite. Mackie, you could come up from, right? So we'll see, get some names and then we'll kind of look at a location or something and see yeah, if we can. I'll, I'll send some notes out, but I look, I'm thinking south of Dallas. Laura, you're in, um, you're in, uh, oh, you're with Carrie. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to say hello to Mrs. Irwin, whom I think yep. is Barb Irwin. Are you Barb Irwin? Yes, hello. Hello. Okay, Barbara, when you're next to Jeanette Irwin, right? <laughs> but you're not related. No. <laughs> and Jeanette and, and Barb, where are you from? Jeanette, you're from, oh, Johnstown. Ohio. Yeah, Ohio. yeah I'm Johnstown. Ohio, too. And, uh, oh, where? Uh, where? Uh, Youngstown. Oh. Where are you? Johnstown uh, as well, but it's uh, not Johnstown, Johnstown. Oh, okay. I'm Close to Sam Mary, Ohio. Oh, okay. And Barb, you're in Youngstown? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I need to go up near the Youngstown area because I never get up in that area. Um, anyway, 
Um, okay, so I'll send out a notice and I'll see what we can do. Bruce, I saw you nodding your head too. Would you be into some sort of uh, get together in the, uh, the summer? Because you've been to training, yes. right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Um, I think that may be the best solution. Um, I would love to um, just hold a workshop or a series of workshops you know, very close to Dallas, um, but uh, not until we get this whole COVID thing over with. Would so. you not do anything like this over Zoom for that? Or is that, I don't might be trying that too. Okay. Well, that, yes, that's a, no, that's a good point. I mean, actually, <laughs> what we might try is doing just a Zoom meeting with just this particular group. And we could, you know, I mean, I'll still put out a notice and I'll see what kind of interest there is. Maybe that would be the best thing. You know, if uh, it's, I mean, everybody who is nodding their heads at the moment um, would say, you know, you guys are all interested and you're obviously able to attend uh, virtually. So, uh, but we, you know, generally the workshops are, they last a long time. And although we're going to post something about using Stevenson remotely and post a recorded Zoom session, that was fun. <laughs> What's the name of the cat? Oscar. Oscar, I like it. I got two, I got two black ones. Um, anyway, it's great for Halloween. Um, the, uh, so anyway, where was I? What was I talking well, the, about? That, that the actual workshops last about six hours. So I don't know that we could do that on Zoom, but we could maybe break it up into like two hour chunks or something. Yeah. Or something like that for a few weeks in a row. Yeah, Karen. Can I ask a question? I'm curious if the training that you're speaking of for the summer will be like just how to use Stevenson or if it will be also geared toward how to use Stevenson virtually, you know, like, as yeah, they are that's what's sort of two different topics almost yeah, as well. Yeah, different. Carrie, one of the things we're going to do, I don't know if you're around for the beginning of this or if you know about it. Oh, hi, Tammy. Hello. Tammy, you're, 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 you're Bruce's buddy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're okay. You're the one I saw on the uh, videos. Okay, um, where's Carrie? Uh, I don't know if you're here for the uh, last uh, session, but. Um, we are going to try to uh, put together um, a recorded uh, Zoom video that we're going to post um, on <coughs> on the uh, website. Um, and I don't think that that would be, a, I mean, it's definitely not going to be a full day workshop by any means. That's going to be just, or it's going to be free and it's oriented towards anyone who wants to know what are the online resources that you can use with Stevenson and give them examples and show them how. And that's what we've been talking about for the last few weeks. Right. Um, so we want to try to condense that information into one Zoom presentation. So that will be online okay. and that will stay there. Yeah. Now, it's, but for the, as far as the workshop that we were just talking about, um, Kathy, uh, uh, I think it, you were the one who asked about whether we we're going to do a workshop this summer, right? Mm -hmm. Kathy? Yeah. Yes. Yes, no? Yeah. Yes. Hello? It was Mackie. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Mackie so, that asked that. Oh, Moss Mackie. Um, in any case, if we, were, we started to talk about just the people here being interested in that, if we were going to do that kind of a workshop for you folks, we wouldn't be starting with how do you use the Stevenson program? Because all of you know too much about it already to. <laughs> <laughs> Mackie and I were really looking forward to the training that you were going to do after spring break in wherever it was going to be. I don't, can't remember. Wasn't it? In it? Wasn't I booked for Ennis? Yeah, yeah. So we that's why we're it. really looking forward to it. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, like, it's not like we don't know anything about it, but there's always something more we could <laughs> learn. You know, we, I hadn't used it in 25 years. So <laughs> thank God for the teacher's manual. Um, and we just plug away at it. 
but it would be nice. I, I certainly wouldn't turn down a training for sure to to just uh, revisit the nuts and bolts and kind of the scope and sequence. Right. And then more like make and take stuff or, you know, stuff we can really use, whether it's in the brick and mortar classroom or in the online classroom, either one. But. Right. I think you guys are going to have to give us input on the virtual because you've walked it and done it and done such an amazing job already. And um, I'm still even trying to wrap my head around how you all got so much done to present to kids in such a short amount of time. It's just amazing to me. So yeah, no, I yeah, I think what we've learned in the last um, six weeks or so. Uh, I mean, we have learned from <laughs> the teachers more than you know Nancy or I teaching the teachers. Uh, can people hear me again? Because I disappeared for a while, or you all disappeared. <laughs> Was that, was that the whole thing going down, or was that just me? Just no, you're me. good. We can hear you. Okay. I don't know what happened. You're back. That's okay. Sorry. Anyway, I think we should definitely work out a Zoom session with all of you folks before school starts. And because it's easy for us to communicate with you, um, we can kind of create our own agenda. And we can start from the beginning if you want, but um, it really won't be necessary to go through every last little step. What do you think, Nancy? Um, yeah, definitely. And I think <laughs> Bill and I have been talking to you about what I um, personally treasure the most is the times that I sat around Nancy Stevenson's table, dinner table, like, and just had a discussion. I don't know how we got so brazen and just invited ourselves up to their home. I will just never even believe that I did that. But I was like, we bought a plane ticket and we flew to Massachusetts and like, here we are. Um, and it was Nancy was so happy to see you. My mother is so happy to see them. I, my, my God, she would have adopted them. So in my anyway. mind, it was these dining room discussions, you know, and we just we just sat around and we just talked about students and topics and why did you make this decision and why did you make this decision and where is this going? Because when I started, you know, you do something and you go, why did I just do that? I don't know if any of y'all feel that way, but you kind of do something, you go, why did I just say that? And you don't see the payoff for, you know, 30 lessons maybe. And if you never get out of green, you never see the payoff um, for some of the things that you've done. And so in my mind, I would like for Zoom to kind of recreate that for you all. And so I've kind of sent Bill a list of ideas that I want to talk about. And that's what's kind of going through my mind is this idea that we just sat around the dining room table and we just said, well, what about this? And what about this? And how did you do this? And, um, you know, not so much a formal formalized training, but just so you learn some more about Nancy Stevenson and her thoughts and her ability to think through why she designed this program, what traps she was watching out for, so that as you create things virtually, you avoid those traps that she so carefully constructed in this program to not, to not cause children to fail before they were ready. Um, Let me... So, Nancy, when did you send me that list of ideas? Uh, last week. <laughs> okay, I better go check my email. What, 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 what Nancy is saying is, I think, exactly what we ought to do. Um, is basically try to recreate sitting around in person talking to each other about all the, the stuff that comes up. I think we should have a list of things that we are going to cover that we're all interested in. But the stuff that just comes up and just happens, I mean, the discussions, I sometimes feel like I should just stop the workshop after about an hour and a half and just talk to everybody for the next four hours because it, 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 everybody's got a slightly different take on things. And, um, you know, what comes up is very instructive. So I think that that's what we should do. So kick us off, Bill. What's something you think we, what, what topic comes to your mind that your mom well, well, I'll, I'll tell you so eloquently on? I'll tell you some of the topics that come to my mind, and they have a lot to do with the fact that 
Um, I've had to figure out how the Stevenson program fits into or does not fit into all the trends that have been going back and forth in education since I started working with my mother. Um, and they never end and everybody gets an idea and it's all, you know, there are always questions about that. So I start thinking about certain things. Um, those are not necessarily the things that the teachers are always thinking about. Um, but I'll tell you some of the things that, 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 that are on the top of my head. One of them is the whole decoding issue, the whole decoding, encoding issue. Um, and, you know, the whole, uh, how you teach phonics, how you teach word attack skills, and why the structure is necessary and what, uh, you know, and that gets into the whole, you know, why do you use long vowels first and how important is that? And um, the, when I, the reason I, I talk about the decoding first is because so many people, I, this gets back to what um, people at the system level I want to know about, so many people think that Stevenson is just phonics. Hmm. Now, if you spend any time with Nancy Zemi, you'd realize that it's uh, got lots of vocabulary building. <laughs> Nancy Simi is a natural vocabulary builder. <laughs> we all sort of lean towards the things that we uh, do, you know. But vocabulary, you know, is the, you know, vocabulary is the essence of uh, the, the, the foundation for good comprehension. And the coding is totally necessary, you know, uh, because if you don't read the word right, then, you know, you'll get the meaning wrong. Um, but so, uh, you know, one of the first topics I get into is the whole, you know, oh, well, Stevenson is a phonics program. Well, it is a phonics program, and I don't want to belittle that because decoding comes first, um, not because it's most important, but because if the student doesn't read the word correctly, then everything else falls apart, and it's just common sense. So... Um, but I like, I like to make sure people understand that there's much more in the program. And just the little simple things about syntax and, and punctuation and stuff, it's all stuff that's very practical. And I mean, we could talk about why all those other things are, are important. Certainly the whole comprehension issue, there's been a battle in education between decoding versus comprehension, decoding versus comprehension, decoding, you know, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, you, you have to be able to do a lot of things to get the actual meaning out of written text. Um, and these things are woven together and there's a reason why they're in the order they're in and we would, you know. So, um, so that whole thing about there being more than decoding, uh, then the next thing that worries me about the decoding is that um, people don't really understand the seven special steps. Um, and it, it, it's perfectly, that makes perfect sense and I'm not blaming anyone, but it's so easy to um, revert to the habits that you had before. And almost none of those habits involve finding the vowel sound before you try to read the word. And looking at the whole word is still the most important step, you know. Anyway, I like to go through, I never go through a workshop without walking people through why the seven special steps are important, how to implement them, when to implement them, and, um, and making sure that they don't walk out of a workshop thinking that they can just go do the ordinary word of text stuff, you know, well, what's the first letter? Guess, look at the picture, you know, all that stuff. We don't want them guessing. We want them mastering the ability to figure out words. Anyway, I can see, see, I've already started into my whole thing, but I, I mean, you know, but the, if you sit around, if we all treat this as sitting around the table, and I think that that's really a very productive thing to do, and, and we should do it this summer. And maybe we should do it on a regular basis with those people who, who want to put in the extra effort to contact us that way. Anyway, um, so that's... So do, any, do any of y'all struggle with the seven special steps? Do you feel like you need... Leslie, what, what's your struggle with them or what would you like? What are those? I'm, no, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I struggle with it in that I don't care how much I try to force you know not force it but go over the steps and talk to the kids about look at the whole word 
what is your vow, what's your vow pattern, they still want to sound it out letter by letter by letter by letter. Starting with the first letter, right? Yes. Okay. It, it's so frustrating to me to break them off of that and get them to not sound out every letter from the first letter. Um, like, Leslie, I, uh, I can, yeah. I can I tell you activities or exercises that will help you get them into that habit. I do want to say it's one of the ha ha hardest habits to break. The two hardest habits to break are starting to sound out the word from the beginning, which like the whole world does and was taught to do. Mm -hmm. And then the other habit is guessing. Like if you can't figure out the word quickly, you try to remember what they were talking about or what the teacher likes or what the picture is or what all these other. And understanding how to cure the kids of guessing and how to get them to um, develop the habit of different, uh, using a word, new word attack. So those things are very, um, very difficult. And um, the first thing I have to mention for that is the game. Um, but uh, before I go on about that, um, I, I don't, well, what I was gonna say is I don't want to go on and on about that issue if that is not something that everybody wants me to go on and on about right now and I can go over those activities with you. If everybody else wants to listen, I'll, I'll babble on for 10 minutes. I think babble on. Jeanette, yeah, babble on. Jeanette's oh. slides that she did are about the group game. So this will tie together when I get her slides posted because she did some really nice slides for the group game and how to play it. And um, I used it very successfully. It became my whole classroom management system. So babble on, Bill, let's hear your take on it because we are here to learn these things, so. Okay, well, I mean, the, the, the issue, we're talking about two different issues that are really related there about uh, kids having habits. And by the way, if you are working with kids who are, uh, uh, you know, really uh, dyslexic or reading disabled and uh, they're in fourth or fifth grade or anything above third grade, it's even harder to break them of the habits than it is if they're younger. So um, one of the other problems about kids getting older is all the bad habits. Anyway, uh, so let's talk about the uh, uh, not uh, getting them to do the seven special steps first. So, um, and, and not starting at the beginning of the word. I'll talk about that. Um, First of all, it's important to understand that the seven special steps weren't there. And I'm just saying this not because you, Leslie, do this, but because this, some teachers do this, is that they like put a list of steps on the board and try to get the kids to memorize the steps and, and all that. And it, it, that can be helpful, um, but it can also be harmful because we don't want them trying to memorize steps. We want them doing it. And it doesn't, and so that brings me to my second point, which is that it doesn't really matter that there are seven. Nancy likes seven special, Nancy, my mother, uh, likes seven special steps because it was kind of alliterative. Um, but you can break those steps down into a number of different, um, a number of different numbers. I always say, if you want a 12 step pro reading pro you know, decoding program, we'll create a 12 step decoding program. Um, but um, th the first step is, is something that people don't always realize how important it is. And I always go into a discussion of, the, uh, Nancy has seen me do this, and I will set this up for the summer if somebody wants to see it. But what I do is I, um, I list different words um, um, where uh, the same letter um, has different vowel sounds. Um, I'm sorry. Yes, the same letter has different sounds based upon its, you know, uh, um, uh, place in the sequence of the letters. And uh, then I get to, I get them to see that if you just start to go piece by piece, um, you're not going to know what the vowel is going to do until you see the structure of the whole word. And thus the whole word is so important. So they don't generally, I mean, you, they think that they're looking, everybody thinks they're looking at the whole word. Um, but what we're actually saying to them is, is you know, look for patterns. Um, but we wouldn't say that uh, because the whole idea of patterns is kind of abstract. So anyway, um, 
Now, the next step is the thing that's hardest. So they look at the whole word now. They want to start at the very beginning. Okay. So what you do is you simply break down this exercise, this into a separate exercise. Now, in order to do this, and this is one of the things why I also want to go back to the group game, um, you want to have um, reward mechanisms. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can also have punishment mechanisms, but I don't really believe in those. So. Uh, the point being that you really need them to focus and you need to figure out what's going to be important to them. Um, and uh, then you need to um, play some kind of game with them where, the, where what they're supposed to do first is, do they see the friends? Yes or no. Do they see the friends? Yes or no. Do they see the friends? Yes or no. Right? And then later on, do they see the peanut butter and jelly friends? Do they see the peanut butter and jelly? Yes or no? And then you create, I'm sorry, I have got to um, kill this. Hi. I should have killed my phone before, excuse me. Okay, so um, so that's, that's simply the activity, but you want there to be some reward. I mean, usually Nancy Stevenson would get out play money. She was always using play money, and it almost always worked, and the kids would get $5 to start with, and if they were impulsive and they just, you know, guessed a lot. I mean, that we'll get back to the guessing in a minute. Um, you know, should take the money from them. In this case, if they, you know, you, you say, do you see the two friends? Yes, and they get, you know, and if they're correct. Um, and then what you do is you have to put um, a list or matrices of words up that are both peanut butter and jelly and not peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and jelly and layer cake and not peanut butter and jelly, you know, as you go along and you need to get them to focus. So like, you know, you point to very different words and, you know, if they get something right, they get a dollar and if they guess and they do it wrong or they're looking at the wrong thing. And, but you're just making them look for the vowel pattern that they've already learned. And then other things that aren't that vowel pattern. So, I mean, if you want to get really tricky, for example, um, with your OA and AI words, you throw in an OU word, you know, because they see two familiar vowels, they'll think it's speed of bar and jelly. Or you throw in an OI word or something like that. But you're just trying to get them to focus on those things, right? And so, I mean, uh, you know, really all you're doing is you're, you're saying you're having trouble getting them to focus on that. So all you're doing is, is isolating um, that little exercise, that little activity, and making that into something that they will put some energy into. And then you play this little game, you know, you have your word matrix out or you have your list of words and you do this little activity for two minutes one day and two minutes the next day and you just keep doing it. And then after a while, they, they, they will start to get in the habit of looking at the whole word and focusing on the vowel, but do they see the friends? Now, this is also, you see, whenever I get into a discussion, I go crazy because one thing leads to another thing, you know, and this is another reason why the structure of a structured phonics program is important. Because if you throw all the double vowel di digraphs out at once, um, you're not really helping them, right? Mm -hmm. So you're really trying to get them to focus on, you know, one thing at a time, but also see that thing in context, okay? So seeing that thing in context um, um, is hugely important. I will do a little sub-presentation about that, which is the one that I do on, uh, in the workshop. Um, but it just goes to show that you can't really read words in English unless you understand patterns. Uh, and this is where most phonics programs break down, by the way. You will find a lot of programs out there that use um, uh, visual mnemonics to connect letters to sounds. Um, the one I always do is the B that has a baseball bat and then a, uh, a little baseball and then it makes it a lowercase b and then or that's D and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, you know, and, you know, a lot of people have done that, and it's, it, no, that's not our mnemonic for B. But, you know, they can do that. They put the A in the apple. They, you know, there's all sorts of visual mnemonics for um, But nobody takes it to the, letter, uh, the level of recognizing patterns. 
And really, the English language is all about seeing patterns. And some of those, you know, some kids are just natural decoders. They, they see the pattern, they see it a couple of times, they realize that, oh, yeah, it's like this. Or, oh, sometimes the pattern has a different sound, but I'll remember that, you know, it just happens automatically. Um, the way some people automatically recognize somebody else's face, and some people have very poor facial recognition. I mean, it's just the way our brains are different. Um, so anyway, um, now the important one of the important things about the game is the is to get them from the guessing. The group game has two uh, incredibly valuable um, qualities to it. Uh, one of the qualities of the game uh, is to keep the kids from guessing, to keep them uh, um, from being impulsive and making sure that they do the figuring out that they need to be able to do if they're going to move forward with reading. Um, but, uh, uh, wait a minute, what was I talking about? I'm talking about the group game. Oh, oh the, other, the other thing besides um, uh, the guessing is that when you're working with a group, one of the things that always happens is that, you know, somebody gets to read sentence number one, somebody else reads sentence number two, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you got four kids in the group and the, the three that aren't reading or thinking about recess or what to do after school or what they're going to have for lunch. And that's not helpful uh, until they get around to their turn, you know, and then yeah. their turn, then they start looking at, oh, I'm number three, I'll do, you know. Um, so uh, you want everybody paying attention and trying to figure out every word every time, right? Um, and what happens with the group game is if you're not paying attention, you can uh, lose money even if you're not reading. And if you are paying attention, you can make money even if you're not reading. I mean, I say reading aloud. Um, so consequently, um, you want to be paying attention. And so uh, the group game has a great capacity for um, keeping everybody else who's not the oral reader at the moment involved. Um, and that can be very important, particularly, um, I mean, particularly for your public school teachers, it's not as important in the one-on-one -on -one situation. I mean, obviously you don't play the group game and, uh, you know, we don't call it the group game in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but, but let me uh, digress for a moment. And you can do a variation of the group game on one-on-one. -on -one. It, it obviously isn't, it, it's obviously just to, um, uh, uh, what's the word I want, uh, inhibit the, the guessing. Um, and, and that is you just, uh, you, it, it's still a reward mechanism. You give somebody five play dollars and they, um, um, play a game with you and if they uh, read something uh, incorrectly, if they guess and they're impulsive, um, then they'll lose a dollar or whatever. And if they good and they read the whole sentence and they're very patient, you know, they get extra money, that kind of thing. But see, it matters. I mean, so many of these kids are hyperactive and they're, and it's really hard for them to focus their attention for extended period of time. So they might read half of, of one of the Stevenson sentences with peanut butter and jelly and layer cake words and get halfway through it. And, you know, their little brain is exhausted halfway through the sentence and they just revert to guessing for the other half. Um, but if they are going to lose money, um, you know, they'll pay more attention to it and they'll keep, they'll, they'll maintain um, their focus. Um, so you can do that one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, uh, it's also fun if you're working with a uh, student one-on-one -on -one to um, play the game with them. So you have to read sentences, you make mistakes, see if they uh, uh, catch your mistakes. Because when you're, when you're playing the group game with a group, if you're, if you're the one who is not reading out loud, but you notice a mistake that the reader makes, you can make money by pointing out that mistake. But you have to do it, and this is very important, Nancy Stevenson used this a lot, uh, but you have to do it politely. He always had small groups of, of you know, hyperactive. What did, what did we call those Nancy's? What did she call them? Mosquitoes? The ones that would like, you know, never stay yeah. in one place for <laughs> more than a couple of seconds. Turn, yeah. So she'd have a small group of, of, of these kids and, um, 
she would, and, and one would always be interrupting the other. Um, so she, she laid down the law, they lose money. If they see somebody else make a mistake and they want to point it out, they raise their hand politely like this. No waving up in the air. No, you know, none of this stuff. Politely. They, so she would have, you know, small group of hyperactive boys going like this <laughs> every time they wanted to make an extra dollar. So um, they, it's, you know, they, it, it's a very useful tool. Uh, and the rules are not all that important. I mean, the basic concept is important. But you can make up the rules as you go along. Nancy was always giving people extra money because she really liked the effort they would put out. And it was good for the kids who had the most trouble because they would labor so hard, but you know, she'd just like give them extra extra money for their effort. Anyway, I see, I went off and I didn't even cover all the things I could cover. Um, so did I talk about decoding in a meaningful, not to, well, whatever. Questions? Yes. Questions? <laughs> I don't want to be all alone here. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some good ideas going on with the chat, too, as far as, like, the it, when you're oh, talking chat, virtually. Can I, so, can I um, see chat, too? Jeanette, you typed up the slides. So I'm going to ask you, since we're on the group game, and you typed up the slides for your virtual classroom, this is something that you do pretty much live with the students. Have you found a way to interpret that game that they can do offline and come back to it or is this something that you're pretty much doing in a live setting um thank you i did have to do both ways i we played online uh we, i mean we always play in the classroom but with the real and actually i have it here someplace uh the dollar money see <laughs> so we do with real classroom so i have everything there so i did set it up uh when some of our uh, meetings and like um, um, they said it was like two or three minutes and that was it. I mean, just really quickly. So I taught them how to play the game and then I set it up in Google Classroom and then every kid had their own copy so they could manipulate it and then they can play as many times as they can with somebody. And the only thing you do is just clear it out and then you can play it as many times as you want. So we play it both ways though. So. And then I also was able to see, go back into the Google Classroom and see how did they how they did with words or things like that or how much money. So it was just like, because I asked them to turn it in. So, so I played both of them. So it didn't work, I mean, they like it, so. What, uh, Jeanette, that's fantastic. I mean, I, it would never have occurred to me that you could have played the group game virtually. Well, we play on Google Meet. I, I have never used Zoom, so we use Google Meets, uh, but I'm pretty sure it is the same thing. Right. I mean, uh, the fact that you could put Because it. you just present it, uh -huh, you just present it, and then I will move everything, so. The, but the fact that you could actually do it in the class, figure out that it could be in the classroom and you could have several people at once looking at things, that's, that's great. Yes, you just do it in Google Slides and then you just present your screen as the presenter and then they will see it and then I will put uh, next to it, I will put the, the, the little line or just click on the reading and you split your screens so they can see in one they see the reading and the other half they see the game. So then they see how I, I am moving the money and then they are able to read the, the, the writing. The only thing is that you have to do like probably just six sentences because uh, when you click oh, yeah. on the pictures, it's not too big. So for them to be able to focus and see it, it just maybe like six, um, six little uh, sentences and then uh, kind of like uh, do more slides and that change it. But with first graders, that's what I did with it. I mean, you just play one game and you're, you, you right. lost them. So, and then you had to switch with something else. But I mean, they, it was more for them to have it and for me a way to kind of see what they were doing on their own. Uh, because one of my questions was that, how did you collect the data? Because when we're in the classroom, I mean, you have a lot of observations, then you have the data skills, you know? And so, but online, it was just like mostly like, I will say something, I would put a whiteboard and I say, you write the letter or the word, but sometimes, I mean, you don't know who's helping them on the other side. Sometimes I will put the paper and they will read to me and I will make notes like a writing record, but that's not what Stevenson is about. 
but I mean, it's just a way for me to see if they were reading or encoding or decoding the words. And so the group game, it was more informal. And if they read the words, they know, they know how to do it. So, but it worked for me. That's fantastic. Well, I, what you sent, Jeanette, what you sent to Nancy, um, is that something that just explains how you did it? Or is it actually something other teachers can use? Nancy, what did you get? Um, it's her slides where the like the rules for the group game are laid out um, let, on okay. Google Slides, right? Yes, I let me maybe I can try to share it here with you. Uh, again, I had never used a uh, Zoom, <laughs> but <laughs> if you can use Google Meet, you can use it. It's real similar. Uh, I guess see, like now uh, you're really okay. So let me see. I minimize this and open my Google thing. Use that share here. screen. And oh, can, may I ask a question while you're doing that, Jeanette? Sure. Uh, sure. What I wonder is, I mean, we didn't do a lot of Zooming with our people because, uh, Bill, there are too many mosquitoes in our classroom. And yeah. <laughs> to get everybody to kind of zzz, so that we could hear? I mean, how did you manage just the people answering and or saying, you know, so-and-so, there's an error? Well, I do have two screens. Yeah. Uh, so I was able to move my Google Meet, uh, and now I'm gonna learn to do it with my Zoom. <laughs> so, and like right now, you're not looking at me looking at you. So I'm looking to the side because I had two screens, but you can also do it with a split, uh, split screen. I should have that on instead. So you can see oh, how I play it. Uh, so I minimize my, So yeah, I, I'm not sure how to use the the, the Zoom very well. But you didn't uh, we'll end see. up with children right. talking over each other? No, because I did have them and I asked them to uh, to mute the button. And like I said, uh -huh. I did split my screen or in, I mean, in my case, I do have two, uh, two screens. So then I can see uh, my students on the other side. Like right now I can see you and then I can, when I present, uh, you will be able to see it here. I really don't know how to do it with the Google, uh, with the Zoom, how to split it, but I saw a button <laughs> that it says share, but now I can't find it. So can you? Well, uh, uh, Laura, you said that you weren't share uh, doing very much um, virtual, or you said you weren't Zooming with your, uh, um, what were you doing? Were you uh, going on, um, FaceTime or were you not? Uh, Carrie all? would present on Marco Polo ah. and then we'd send home all of the stuff. But well, that, that got to be a pain too because you have to go well, back and find where is that I, lesson. I, I always set it up in Google Classroom and I cannot present my screen because the presenter has a block. So I cannot present my share. Oh, it says, pause the disabled participant <laughs> screen sharing. So I can't do it. But I mean, uh, once you click on it, yes, I mean, you will be able to see it. But, uh, but yes, that's like, a, like right now. That's a see setting my... that Nancy would have to change in there as the host. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Hey, we learned something oh, new, I'm right? Sorry you're trying. <laughs> I don't really know how. Okay, I need to learn some more, obviously, because I'm not sure how to make, Bruce shared his before, so. Yeah, you just have to make sure as the host, you have, um, you allow all participants to share. Okay. That and I think that's because most of assumes that the, um, the kids cannot share their screens. So that's the same right. thing. Um, Laura, uh, Laura you mentioned Marco Polo. Am I crazy or did you say Marco Polo? What is No, Marco? that's what I said. Well, it's like an, it's kind of like FaceTiming too, but it's basically le you are leaving a recording of something. Mm -hmm. So it, um, so you, you, you can't actually interact with them live. It, yes. And I did not like that. You cannot do that. So that's it really seemed, tough. Yeah. 
So That's why I want to know mean, what Jeanette did. So How did she I did. Do I, did uh, I only met with once. It was my intervention group, so I only met with once once a week because there's not enough time when they meet with all the teachers. Uh, so I just met with them for 30 to 45 minutes. I mean, sometimes it will be 20 minutes because you you lose them. And other times it was up to 45 minutes. So it just depends. But uh, I always schedule 30 minutes with them. And it was only once a week. Uh, usually on Mondays, I will send my lessons and my activities in Google Classroom. And then on Wednesday, we'll meet uh, for them to see if they have questions over the assignments. And then I will over a little bit with my uh, lesson live because not all the time I have everybody join, join us. And I mean, we were only four kids, so there was not a lot of kids. I mean, it's a small intervention group, so it's only four kids, but, uh, and then they were have access to it. So I don't know if they were able to see her now, but they always turn in the works. So sometimes late, but, <laughs> part so, of the, but it works. So part of the group game, Laura, is where the money goes. So a little bit of keeping them in control or kind of focused is because if they're not or if they pay the other student so the money doesn't come back to you right so that helps a little bit in the if that dollar slides over to another student then they listen a little more carefully yeah. because they don't want to give their true. money to the other kids I just shared the slides with you, so I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but I mean, click on it and see. It may ask for permission. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm learning with Zoom. Right. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see. Oh, let's see. Oh, right here. Okay, let me see. I see where you did but, it. But I mean, everybody should be able to see it, so if you just click okay, on it, let me, you see. Should let me share my on. screen, maybe. maybe. Let me share my screen. I got it. We're gonna like we're gonna beat this technology. The way I did, I did the whole game by itself because I wanted them to the parents to have the instructions. Then I set it up to play it, and at the end, I do have the review for our of lessons, and you just click on the links. And I took a lot of the information from the site that uh, Stevenson has in our Facebook uh, group. So if you are one of those people who created those things, thank you. It really helped. <laughs> There's the seven I steps. <laughs> no, so this was more like a review for the parents to what do and how to play the game. And then at the end, if they didn't win a lot of money, then, you know, this is how you should be practicing and reviewing. So this is, was the end of our last week of um, class. Okay. So y'all able to see those? So at least it's kind yeah. of set up, you know, talks you through it. This was what your score sheet then, Jeanette, where they could put in their name. How you many? move the money from the top if you click on the money. Oh, oh I it will move. I got yeah. it. Nice. Ah. I got gotcha. you. Well, right now it's in common only, but I think if you if you click on it and then they will tell you you need permission, then I think I can give it to you because I took this from the students uh, Google Classroom right now. So it, for them, I and mean, they were able to play it, but I don't know why he's doing this. So okay. I had never shared things on uh, Zoom. I know, so I don't the know. sharing app. But I can is... see that it's only. Oh, right, but I can see yes. that, that you could drag those to their name when they read something for you. And then you click and you can right read it. here. Uh, you click right here, and it will take you to our readings uh, from Stevenson uh, book. Oh, right. And then here. the last room, the last one, if you click on A, Mm -hmm. So there's yes. what they're reading. Oh, they're right, right there. I'm. So they're, um, they sure read. I'm probably the least technologically capable person here. What are are we looking at a? Oh, yeah. What are we looking at? Are we looking at Jeanette's uh, laptop? It's like an. It's like an interactive PowerPoint. Right. Okay, so this, this this is Google Slides. Now, I, yes. are, am I watching this in Google Slides or am I watching this? Like, can anybody who? Yes. Okay, so this isn't just what's on Jeanette's computer and what she can do. Uh, what we're no, looking at but, is- No, see, my bad. I don't know how to do it either. I was trying to request permission. <laughs> Right there, just click on request access, but that is going to be only to that slide. The one that I oh, sent you, okay. it has all the links that are already 
able to um that everybody can see because this is i i did it through zoom so like i i said i don't know but the one i sent you uh has all the links that you can click so i'm going to post those I mean, on the I don't facebook know, page maybe you can see you and then i'll post your name right now i trouble. just have access uh, you just requested access but it's just to that one Yes, because right. there was one of the lessons that I recorded there too that um, Nancy was having trouble with, but I said like, oops, sorry, I never, I had never shared anything outside our uh, network, so I don't know how, you know, how it works, but um, I already found your, the presentation that I shared, so let me see. So, because also I videotape myself, so right now you're going to be able to Edit on this slide. So make a copy first <laughs> and then do some to click on the second one. And that's the one I send you. And that one you can, you have uh, for editing purposes. So you should be able to see that one. So I'm if you sure. save the notes, can everybody save notes, save the chats from the Zoom thing? So then the chat would have the link in from Jeanette too. Yes, you, the only thing is make a copy of that one, please, before you play around, um, because that's the edit one. But uh, oh yeah, don't mess so it up. So if you close this one and don't see, delete it. If you close this yeah. one and then click on the second link, you should be Nancy. If you close this one on the top on the top uh, tab, and then you just click on the new link, that one is the one you will be able to like for them to see right now. Okay, I clicked on the second link. This should be the second link. So uh, still saying it's not. So I'm sure I'm doing something so wrong. You all people yeah. that know technology, <laughs> and I will post it um, in the in the Facebook group too. I'll post that link in the Facebook group. Okay, okay here this one is a. If you click on this one, then it's going to force you to make a copy and then you will have your own copy. So there you go. Okay. I already have for years. So. Okay. But yeah, so the point is that the first is the introduction of how to play the game, the rules, and then they play it. And then it, it tells you there, if you didn't win, then review around the book uh, room. And then you, I did a two recording lessons with the ABCs and then the other one with the uh, um, words that sound the same. And then they click in everything. And from the side that uh, Nancy has there, uh, there are a couple of people who are reading books and with the patterns, that was really great because you just put the books in there and other uh, Google Slides from uh, the, the Facebook group. Um, I just took it from there and put them together. So that's very, very helpful, at least for me. <laughs> so it helped me a lot. But okay. And so if you have any questions, just let me know and I will give you access to it so i think i got it posted in the facebook group so we'll see so anyway i think this is great um i just <laughs> i just opened the chat because i'm so technologically um uh, uh, uh limited yeah. anyway um for the, as far as there's two questions i want to mention uh uh one one is uh, um uh, the the data collection, um, that's I mean, uh, in general, data collection on the Stevenson program, on progress in the Stevenson program, testing assessments, that kind of thing. It's a big deal, and it's a kind of lengthy subject that I don't think I'll try to go into in full detail now. I I do have to say that um, the me making. Getting data in a small session in this particular um, environment is is like really it, it's going to be very very rough. That doesn't mean that the schools aren't going to want you to do it. I'm just saying I don't take the data too uh, hard. Um, the other thing is, as far as the Stevenson stuff goes, if you have the um, well, it's a little late in the school year, but if you have the mastery management tests, um, at least it can be helpful to have a record of how they've done with those tests. Um, 
but as far as other data goes, um, if you want to talk about collecting it like next year when school starts, but I don't know what you can get out of one session every other day at this point remotely. I'm just saying that. The other thing is somebody said something about having the classroom sets as like, you know, five of one book and five of another and something. I think that was Bruce. Um, and um, no, it's a good idea. I've thought about doing that. Um, what I really want to do, uh, and that's why I haven't done any of this for a long time, is because I really want to get the people who created those little small readers to um, just um, uh, let us have the intellectual property totally and rewrite them totally and sell them one book at a time and get different illustrations and things like that. I, I just wanted to redo them totally. But I, we, we need books that, you know, you need, you know, you might need more of Mike Saves the Day and not so much of, you know, the space creeps, in case you happen to know our stories. <laughs> Um, anyway, how's Tammy's dog? And oh, <laughs> I can't, yeah, I can't, can't hear you, Tammy. You're not, oh, there you are. Hi. 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 Oh, what's the dog's name? Chloe. What, Chloe? Chloe. Yeah, oh. hi, Chloe. <laughs> oh, you're friendly. She wants me to go play. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, she wants to play ball, doesn't she, Tammy? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, can I jump in? Yes. Bill, um, so somebody else created those readers. Is it possible that you are going to get the rights to them, or is that still something that you're? No, Working. yeah, no, no, it's very possible. Uh, I mean, I got to talk to there. There's four teachers who are all retired who many years ago um, in New Hampshire, they have four teachers in New Hampshire were using the program and they created these books. I mean, they yeah. use, using the program and the ideas and the sequence and everything. Um, yeah. And they had them typed up on a primary typewriter and, and rough illustrations and stuff. So, yeah. We just put them together into a very rough, simple book many, many, many years ago. And we pay them a small royalty and we don't sell that many, you know. Uh, but I haven't gotten around to, you know, I, I mean, before I go around printing individual books, I really want to get different illustrations in them. Those illustrations are Yeah, great. I agree. And, um, and so I, I need to confront them it's not a matter of money. It's a matter of I don't want their feelings hurt by the fact hurt. that they yeah. want to destroy their work. <laughs> yeah. Tear it up and make it better. You know. And so I just haven't done that yet. The alternative is if, <laughs> is that we just write a whole bunch of new stories for ourselves and get uh, we have a uh, we have an illustrator. We don't need to worry about that. Where are you, Lori? Lori, did you <laughs> Yeah, I like it. Oh, there you are. Hi, Lori. Hello. Now, you know, Lori, Lori, Lori has a contact. Oh, good. Yeah, with, with an illustrator. So, um, yeah. Hi, Carrie. What? Oh, your 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 speaker's not on, Carrie. Carrie, oh, unmute. Oh, I thought Carrie. Was, oh, that was a thumbs up. I thought. I no. Thought. <laughs> no, I had a question though. Um, so, Laura and I were working with young readers, like kindergarten readers, and we took some of the um, book some of the text in the green level reading book and turned it into our own like picture books. Was there thought behind why there were not pictures associated with text? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, let me, uh, th this is a whole other thing that I can sort of go on uh, for a great length at. Um, Nancy Stevenson, when we uh, first um, created the books, the, one of the biggest things in kindergarten and first grade going on was that um, look at the pictures and then guess right. the word based on what you see in the pictures. Right. And all she wanted to do is avoid that at all costs. Yeah. Right. And when we created the beginning, may I, I mean, book, uh, what happens is children don't like to look at a book that is all text. 
Yeah. Right. Um, now, they don't mind as much when they're at the basic level and they can read. Um, and But even there, I would like to put in pictures. But I we started to put in pictures that had nothing to do with the stories. Yeah. Or had very little to do with the stories. <laughs> and they had a caption on them. And, you know, uh, and they were pictures just to so that there wouldn't be all text on the page. Mm -hmm. um, but there wouldn't be pictures that they could use to guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, that's, that's the whole thing. But it isn't really... I mean, kids want to be able to read text and look at pictures. Mm -hmm. It's right. totally reasonable. <laughs> yeah. It's just a, with that guessing issue being so so much of a problem, mm -hmm. when, Laura, when, when Nancy was developing the program, she just didn't want that problem. Mm -hmm. But I came along and I wanted to sell books because, you know, it's hard to to stay in business if you don't sell books. So I tried to make them a little, you know, look a little friendlier. Um, anyway, I could go on and on about the whole picture thing. Um, but uh, that's the rationale. Did that answer whoever's question it was? That's mine. Basically, we were wondering if, you know, like it was sentences in the green level reading book. And if we yeah. took those and kind of organized them around some sort of theme about the goat and the coat and you know, all of that, if we kind of turn them into a book with pictures, like we literally cut them out, taped them on, copied them, folded them. Is, are we doing a disservice to those younger readers no, by no, kind of no. putting and them with pictures? That's, no, no, that is very important. Um, you now think about um, the uh, sub, sub skills and sub tasks that uh, you are talking about in what you just suggested. And they are very different than the task called looking at the picture and guessing the text, right? You're looking at the text, figuring out what the text says, and then creating a mental image which you want to, it's absolutely crucial, that's what the vocabulary building is about. That mental image can be translated into a, you know, a drawing, a picture. You can cut and paste and, and, and create your own book and your own story. And that's wonderful. There are a lot of kids, and now I'm going to go off on a tangent, a little bit of a tangent, but this is one of the hard things to understand about kids who are struggling readers. So many of the kids who are struggling readers have language processing issues. They're even bigger than their reading issues, although their decoding issue can be very separate. Um, and the language processing uh, uh, issues mean that some kids have very good receptive language or ordinary average receptive language and very bad expressive language. So when you're getting them to create sentences and uh, generate, the generate, generating neurological system is different than the receptive neurological system. And, I, and I'm no expert on that, but, you know, there's true enough generalization. Um, and so some of your kids... Um, a higher percentage than of uh, the general population of your struggling readers will have trouble really generating ideas. But that doesn't mean that they don't comprehend well. So I think making up a story, particularly as a group, is a wonderful process. You know, you just come up with a goat and your goat does different things and you can use some words that they can't decode um, and you can treat them as feed words and read to them. Um, and they can make pictures, their own pictures. Somebody can have a, the picture of the goat on one page and someone can do the goat the, on the road on another page. Someone can do soap, you know, on the goat in another page, that kind of thing. Anyway, all of that's wonderful. It really involves them. It makes all of the processes work. But it isn't the same as looking at a picture and then using that picture as your crutch because decoding is so hard for you. Now, one other thing I want to say is, uh, <laughs> is kind of tangential, but uh, by and large, this happens a lot in education, and it, those of you working with struggling readers should understand this, that um, uh, a lot of educators and theoreticians and academics have decided that what you do is you see what the good readers do, and then you... Uh, enumerate those characteristics and then you make all the struggling readers do the same characteristics that the, the good readers do. 
Um, and um, that is <laughs> uh, that's sort of the opposite of what you ought to be doing. So there are tons of people who learn very well by looking at pictures and get, guessing works well if, if everything else in the, in the neurology is lined up for it. So that when you guess something, you retain the actual correct version of what it was that you saw and you connect the thing that you correctly guessed with that correctly thing and you store that, great, guessing worked for you. Um, but if guessing, you know, anyway. Uh, the, I really went off on a tangent there. <laughs> Sorry. This is what happens if you listen to me for very long. You see, that's why I have to do workshops, is I have to organize it. Anyway. Um, but, you know, it, it, anyway, so you, you need to be recep uh, um, sensitive to the whole receptive generative um, uh, issue. Um, but no, yes, please do exactly what you were saying, um, Carrie, about that, um, you know, and uh, make up books like that. And I love group activities. One of the things that happens too, let's say you have a group of struggling readers and, you know, you got a four or five, six of them, and one of them has a m more serious language processing issue and really cannot express himself very well, even though he seems to comprehend very well, but the other three are kind of normal, expressive, receptive balance. Um, and then, you know, it's beneficial for them to work as a group and create a story and understand. So, so the one who can't generate can participate in all the other benefits. Um, and it, it'll also help him generate in the long run. So, you know, that's one of those group, um, what do they call it, cooperative learning things um, that it could be very valuable. I got to shut up. <laughs> Someone else says- questions? We're going on kind of an hour and 15 minutes. I know y'all have places to be and things to do. Anybody else have? Uh, a question that they has popped up in their mind they want to ask if you need to excuse yourself you're not hurting anyone's feelings to come and go we totally understand that so one thing that came to mind as he was talking was about mm -hmm. some of my readers here because one of the things that tammy and i did in our canvas course was um well, that's because I was trying to recreate the brick and mortar classroom in, in the Canvas Zoom setting recorded, you know, as similar to what we were doing in class. So the kids would be comfortable with it. And so I always started out with a read aloud of a story. And so we were using pretty stories from the library, you know, not that these aren't pretty, Bill, but you're right. They, <laughs> no, you're, uh, <laughs> you're not hurting my feelings. You're in 100% agreement. They're not pretty. So we were using Patricia Polacco books, and I, you know, used yes. her story, her life story, as a way to motivate them, the struggling reader themselves, that they could have hope to be successful like she was. And so then, as it turned out, we started using those stories that more correlated that on their website that had the had many of the same words but as i'm thinking about it now one thing that and what we did is we created quizzes so we broke the story down into segments and then we recorded it first and then i started using those other ones that those famous people read but then uh, we made up multiple choice questions or true false questions comprehension if you will questions about the story so the same could be done here i suppose and well Ned, I, in case you don't know because i don't think we sell it in pal anymore i, I hope nancy hasn't lost it but yeah. nancy actually has i have a set of questions for question we should put oh. them up on something we got to put those well up. i mean they wouldn't be that hard to make uh i mean dave and jay go to the fair but it's question a great number one for the kids to Where's do dave the and jay go right, yeah. right but something that would be helpful here thinking of an online setting would be these electronically so that's because the thing that we lacked in that was the Nancy. page were not being read by the child they were just listening to the story. Oh, right. So if we had this on the screen shared 
<laughs> you read the story. At the fair, or is that the space creeps? Oh no, that's at the fair. This is at the fair. I couldn't tell the difference. And between the child could read along, so to speak. Yeah. And then. You can do that. After Can't page, you just take pages, a picture of that, Bruce? You could have a quiz. You oh, can. you can scan it and these, I guess if you're not caught breaking copyright, but. Well, yeah. One out of the 20, and they're minor details. Well, pages. <laughs> that's a lot of pictures, but um, that, that's, that's what we've been doing. No, I. You know, a Google you do form. I do have PDF files of those now. Oh, I sent those PDF oh. files to you, Bruce. So. Yes, you sent me a lot of PDFs. Okay. Images you can put some be, of those on the Google Google Classroom, and then you make your own question there. And yeah, then right. There and so we use we them. use Canvas, like and we made quizzes in Canvas, which is very similar to Google Form. Google is that free? Canvas? No. Um, is that it's the same with free, the Jamboard? Because I saw you guys. Hi, Jennifer. Our special ed director joined us now, Jennifer Nelson from NS. I invited her, so. Hello. Hello. She's been there for a while, but I wasn't. Hi, Pam. Um, yes, Canvas is something that we pay for. That is a platform that we pay for, but it's like Blackboard, that, that type of thing. Um, Canvas, Blackboard, those kinds of things. Um, it is a platform, but it's a great platform. It has a lot of ways to track. Same things. with Jamboard, because I saw a couple. Uh, Jamboard is free or free so far, right, Lori? In the Google. Yeah, I mean, that's things. a different kind of thing. That's more of a tool or um, how, like something that you might put in Canvas, right? Could you? Right. Yeah. So yeah it's i don't know how to explain that um it's like a big whiteboard that you just put things in there like i mean but you can put you can create the little sticky notes i was going to tell you laurie like we, that. that's what we, i like when you can manipulate i saw some jam. of the examples we continued to use jamboard and then these last two weeks we um turned them into what you were doing and we made them uh, to where the child did the, did the sorting on their own jam. Uh -huh. So that then they really turned good. that in like it was a kind of like a Google slide. Oh, that's good. So that they dragged okay. the post-its over. If y'all scroll down the Facebook feed, Lori and Bruce and Tammy have been really good about sharing their links too. So there's some Jamboard links that they've created on the Facebook feed, you just have to scroll down on the share group. Oh. So I guess, well, I think the question that was asked about Jamboard, it is free, but it would be like, you can create a lesson on Jamboard, but then like, what would you put the lesson in? Like Bruce created a, a whole class on Canvas. Like you can do, you can do that in Google Classroom, Canvas. I Blackboard, but Jamboard would be more of a lesson that you could put in there if that helps make it. Make yeah, easier. that's what I was thinking. Thank you. Is, is Jam, I mean, if you were using Google Classroom, assuming Google Classroom is basically similar to Microsoft Teams and um, uh, Canvas and stuff like that, if you were using Google Classroom, would you put the Jamboard thing in as a link? Yes. Or would it? actually operate inside of, in other words, could you run Jamboard inside your classroom? Yeah, it would just, it would, you could create a lesson. So you would put it in there for whichever students you wanted it for, just as an assignment. And they That's would how go- it works in Google Classroom. Okay, so, and, but they would go to it whenever and do that assignment they wouldn't be doing it with you in front of you oh they would they could oh. is it they could meet or zoom yeah google meet you could put a jam board in google meet yeah so okay don't ask me how have, but... i would do it with them i would have one that's um that's mine that i would have interactively so they would take turns doing it live with me 
and then they all have their own copy of that same Jamboard in that Google they can Classroom. Do on, that, that they can do on their own if they want to, whenever. Yes, yeah, so they would just go into Google Classroom, click on, you could make it as an assignment. You can also just post it as, okay, because I'm not a homeroom teacher this year, so I would use the teacher's classroom, Google Classroom, and then sometimes I'd make my own section of links so okay. the students could get in there. Like I would post the Zoom password, like the Zoom room, so they could click on that to get in. But then I can also post it as an assignment to the students. So there's different ways you can do it. No, no, that's good. I just wanted to know if it was limited. I mean, I'm really glad you can do it with your students so that, you know, yes. I mean, that was the you great thing about it. it. Yeah, it that's it. No, that is a very great thing about it. And that's why we got to make sure that we use that. And that's why I was asking the question. Yeah. That's a very important thing, which, I mean, brings me back to the point that uh, Lori and um, uh, who else is here, yes, Bruce, and a few, and Nancy, of course, they're going to, I'm going to be relying on them a lot this summer to create that um, uh, recorded Zoom session uh, about how to use different resources for Stevenson. Um, and if those of you, let's see, like uh, Tammy, Lori, and Bruce, uh, and Nancy can stick around, I would like to talk to you for about 10 minutes or so. Um, but I, it doesn't mean I want everyone else to leave. I just wanted to mention that. Any other questions? Does Barbara Irwin have a cat in her lap? No, this is Willow. She's a... She's eight eight months old. Uh -huh. oh, 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 I thought it was a cat when I first saw it. And oh. Does anybody else, I know Kathy would like a certificate. I'll talk to Bill about that, but a certificate for this type of a training. If you all need certificates, can you please send me, I'll put my email address, um, and Mr. Stevenson. I will. I'll. Uh, I will send Nancy a. Uh, oh, I have. Well, it has to be signed. Um, yeah. I. I. I will. Yeah. Send. No. Send the email to me. If you need a, a an attendance certificate, send a, an email to info info at stevensonlearning dot com and say, dear Bill, please send me an attendance certificate for the May twenty seventh Zoom session. Okay, well, you can actually say anything you want in there, but I mean, <laughs> just a quick, a quick email to info at stevensonlearning.com. I also have another uh, email address, Bill of Stevenson Learning, but I'm getting so much um, spam there that I, it, I'd be more likely to lose you there. So info, info at stevensonlearning.com. Hi, Bill, please send me an attendance certificate. And yeah, yeah. And I will sign one. Uh, uh, I will sign a PDF. I'll sign one, and then I'll send a PDF file to you, and you can fill out your name and address. I have a question. When it would be yes. appropriate? I don't know if it's appropriate for the whole group. What's the highest grade age level that you feel like Stevenson's really appropriate with? Like, what? How? How high up can we go with this? <laughs> I well, personally uh, you, used it with seventh, eighth, and ninth graders. I've also used it with 10th, 11th, and 12th grade hearing impaired. Okay. You can we're looking for something to do, because we're, we're using it with our, we're using the letter card, the, the letter cards at our ECC, and we're using Stevenson, you know, all the way up through intermediate, which is sixth grade, but I'm looking for something to do with some freshmen that are still just, poor, poor readers and um, the, looking the, for something, maybe it wouldn't be like the whole period, but you right. know, a couple of days a week. No, so. yeah. The, let, let me just say this, as, as a general answer, I always say the same thing. First, it's easier to use the Stevenson program at the elementary level than it is at the middle or high school level. However, um, for ever since we've been in business, people have used um, our materials 
for middle and high school students and adults um, just because if everything else wasn't working and this was working, they would, you know, everybody would just adjust. But it requires a lot of adjustment. Yes. But you know, our, our methodology is different enough that there are many school uh, teachers, I mean, excuse me, Bless you. many, many uh, students who um, uh, need our particular methodology, but our materials aren't really appropriate for them and they, we, everybody just has to make the adjustments necessary. Um, how, uh, what I would say is this, is that if you have a student who is really comfortably reading at a fifth or sixth grade level with accuracy and understanding, that even if that student is in 12th grade and should be doing better, I would not start the Stevenson program with them. The, the amount that you have to go back and go over in all of that is just like kind of, you know, I don't think anybody's going to stick with it. So, but you, we run into, and they're not all cognitively impaired, but some of them are, uh, lots of students in older grades who um, uh, just need a different method. And they respond to Stevenson and, um, you know, people have, have done it for a long time. So if you have those kind of kids and, you know, that old and they're reading at a second grade level, you know, they're guessing their way through that. First of all, if you have a if you have a kid over the age of fourteen who's reading below a third grade level, I'm willing to bet, and I just guess I, I just made those numbers up. I'm willing to bet that person has a severe blending problem, and that person should get the Stevenson program and and should get extra help from me and or Nancy uh, with that blending problem. Because that is one of the most common things that happens if a, if somebody is not cognitively impaired and they don't have multiple handicaps, but they're severely dyslexic and they are older. And this was, I, I know this because Nancy Stevenson worked with a number of illiterate um, adults who were illiterate. Um, the, the, you know, the chances are just really big that the blending was the thing that, that defeated them. Because if you can't consistently put two sounds or two sound groups like syllables together on a regular basis without coming up with a third incorrect sound or sound group, then everything starts falling apart. And um, that's what happens. You know, they try to put two sounds together and, and the sound that comes out of their mouth is something a little different. And, you know, or they get good at two and they can't get to three or whatever. So that blending thing is something uh, I'm, I'm mentioning to you, Jennifer, because you're at a system level, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you may not have many students like that, uh, but and, and, and the teacher could go years and years without seeing one, even a special ed teacher. But if you, you're at a system level, if you see kids like that, you should get a hold of Okay, okay. I, I, I might go an email and talk with you offline about how we could do that with some who just got to the are, are still just almost non readers. And are cognitively, you know, well, you know, we well, can talk about those. I mean, uh, I'm getting audit, auditory issues. Anybody else? I don't know what's happening. Okay. Jeanette, were you talking? The overlapping is Stevenson with our high schoolers, and it really work. Um, so it may be a program that you can use too. The overlapping from Stevenson. Yeah, the over. That's for yeah. older students. Yeah, with any of the older students, with any of the students over fourth grade, I would be using the overlapping. I yeah, mean, that's what we. Use with high school. I mean, the the, de the decision on whether to use the overlapping uh, um, strategy. Is, is not really based upon their age, um, but it, it, it is really based upon whether or not they have some sight words, they know their letters consistently, things like that. Uh, however, you can usually assume that a student in fourth grade or above, even if they have uh, been in special ed, um, have some splinter skills, and so you use the overlapping with them. But it's still, I mean, they're going to read the overlapping, but they're not going to be reading about, you know, basketball stars and singers. And, you know, they want to read about stuff that 14-year-olds want to read about. And they can't. But anyway, um, I wanted Lori, to have somebody's Oh, Lori, wait a minute, excuse me, let me interrupt. Rob. Um, 
<clears throat> Lori is a great source for getting information about working with older students. She's working at the high school now, and she has really involved kids. Um, in fact, you, you may have kids that aren't anywhere near as involved as Lori's. When I say involved, I mean, you know, multiple learning issues. Um, and so Lori, uh, who is really knows the program well and has been working on a lot of these computer things, um, she's really pretty up to date with uh, <laughs> how to work with <laughs> multiply challenged adolescents. Uh, is that a reasonable phrase, Lori? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I feel like I've used this with pretty much every population you can think of. And right now I am working with middle school and high school. Um, yeah, I mean, Bill's right. M everything from MD to like the most severe um, emotional disturbance that you can possibly imagine. Um, and I have found like, I don't know, I mean, that every student is totally different. And after you use it for a while and use it with different populations, you start to get a feel for where to start and what to do. Some of my high schoolers, I actually started in the green because that's what they needed. But then I'll modify it in ways to suit them. Like if I have super ADHD students and they're not going to be able to focus, even though the green level is set up to change tasks often and all of that. I don't know. I've just found ways to tailor things more towards for the students. And I've also, I don't know, like some of the students I have with um, who are, I guess, I don't know how else to say, like average or normal intelligence, using the overlapping strategy, you run into the issue where they feel like it's babyish and they know this and, hmm. but yet they don't know how to sound words out. So I've also found ways to be able to reach those students to where you have to get past the fact that, okay, this is babyish, like maybe even agree with them. Like, yeah, you know, it is. But oh, it, I, it, I come right out, Lori, and tell them. <laughs> yeah, but you then know. like once they buy into it, they really buy into it. And I have students who are the most, like the hardest, most challenging students who've been like this, honestly, the school I work at, this is like their last chance. Like everybody has <laughs> totally given up on them. I, I, I've been students, to the school, I've seen these students and Lori is absolutely accurate. Yeah, it's, and they can read. Like the students that I, that I started, I was telling Nancy about this not too long ago, the students that I started with three years ago in the green book, because that's where they were and that's what they needed. The overlapping strategy, no, like it was too high for them. They are all, all of that whole group of students is now in the Peach Book and they're doing so well. I mean, it's just awesome. Which is the third level, Jennifer, if you're not familiar. I mean, the Peach Yeah, is the the, they're level. in the advanced level and they all started from scratch in the Green Book because that's how low function, how low their reading skills were. I tried to do the overlapping strategy with them and it was too high. So what I ended up doing was using the green book. And then the next year I actually, like it took me all year to go through all of the green book with them. And then the next year, um, instead of jumping to where you would, or you know, going into the blue book, I used the overlapping strategy first with them. And it was just because that's what they needed. I know that's not the norm, Bill. <laughs> but like, no, no, I, no, but it's absolutely right. And it, this is a, an important point, which I'm, th I'm, I'm sure that everybody who's still on the screen really understands. Once you get to know the program, you know, you have learned a lot about various methods for overcoming various learning issues. And you can apply them in different ways. And yes, you can. I mean, you can't change the, you can't flip the program around and do all sorts of crazy things and expect it to work. I mean, there are people who want to just take a little piece here and a little piece there. Um, but the, no, there's, there's it, we just didn't have the resources to put six different versions of the same thing out there. 
Um, and even if we had, there still would be need to be about 100 more because the kids are unique and you do have to adjust. I think in Jennifer, in your case, if you're at the system level, and I don't really know anything about your system, um, but if you know your uh, high school or middle school teachers, you know, find one or two in special ed that are um, just really um, open-minded and you think they're gonna be around for a few years. And then you get them to learn Stevenson, get them to talk to Lori once in a while, talk to us once in a while, you know what I mean? And you'll develop a resource in your system that can deal with these kids. Um, and she'll have to, or he will have to deal with them in their own unique ways, but they will understand the program well enough to do that. And someone like Lori and people like Nancy, myself, you know, um, you know, we, we can help. Well, so. thank you very much. We're, we're just looking for something because we started Stevenson. Was this year our first year, Tammy? Is that right? Yes. And, and I, I really loved it. I used it when I was in the classroom a long time ago. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> Not it couldn't have been that long ago. <laughs> yeah, it was longer ago than you think, probably almost 20 years ago. Ooh. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I saw the benefits of it then, and, and I see the benefits of it now. And we just have some older kiddos that have, like you say, splinter skills that are are virtually they have they don't have anywhere the near the reading skills that they need to to function at the high school level. Right, and right. we use a lot of you know um, different softwares and things with them that it can read things. But ultimately, just even for their own self, you know, esteem, yes, they, yes. they need to learn to be yeah. a, a functional yeah. reader. And I think in the safety of, a, you know, a small group in a special education class with other students who have that same difficulty, we're finding that some of them are, are stepping out there and going, okay, I'll try. And for the first time in a long time, they're, they're actually sitting there and in trying instead of just guessing. Yeah. They're they're yeah. wanting to actually take that step back and learn a skill. Some of the I, kids we found that some of the kids you have to take one on one. You know, there's no work in a group because they're so embarrassed at that age that you have to grab them just one at a time. And we have students who they will only work if we promise that nobody knows where they're going or why. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they want to learn, but they don't want anyone to know that that's what's yeah, going yeah. on. Right. No, that, I mean, that is very true. With, with the older kids, you really, I mean, every case is a little different. But I want to um, repeat what Laurie had said earlier. Once they get going, it's not an issue. Once the kid feels, and, and I always, when I'm in a workshop, I, I use this example. We all know what it's like to stand up in front of a few people, even if it's five people, and you're not sure about what you're talking about and how you feel trying to talk about that versus standing up in front of the same people and knowing what you're talking about cold, really understanding it, and then how do you feel? Well, they always feel like the first way. They never feel confident. They don't believe it. They don't get, you know, they don't have any faith that any of this reading instruction stuff's gonna work. Right. Um, but when it kicks in, and for some of them it kicks in in a week, but more likely it's going to be a few months, somewhere between, you know, four to six week, and in a really bad situation, maybe three months. But generally speaking, it's a few weeks, and they start to feel it. And when they feel it, when they feel like they can read something with confidence, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, you can have them read the goat on the road. It won't really matter. Right. Yeah, they so, have to feel safe. I mean, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, say, you know, in fact, that's, that's one of my new true saves is that one of the problems with education <laughs> is too many kids simply don't feel safe. Um, and it's very uh, distracting. Anyway, 
Well, thank you very much. I'll, I'll re You're reach out. Thank you. We'll uh, we'll you support you and the teachers, you know, in doing that because I mean that group is my passion too. You just you work with them and you see 15 year olds about to drop out who can't read and you're just like, we just failed them, you know, and it, it, it can be turned around. So we'll support you whatever you need and extra time, phone conferences, Zoom with the teachers, you know, whatever you need to get it going. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay, um, I want, uh, I want, Bruce, I, I'm going to have to leave in a little while. Can I grab uh, Nancy and um, maybe Tammy if she wants to join us and Bruce and Lori um, for a few more minutes and say goodbye to Laura and Mackie and Barb and Jennifer? Is that okay? Yeah. No. Thank you all for Thank attending. You. Thank you. Uh, we're we're here. You know how to get a hold of us. So yeah. <laughs> never feel reluctant. Bye, okay. Barb. Bye. Are you in the? Yeah. I'll I'll okay. give you one. Okay. Okay. Bubbles. Um, did Bruce go? No, Bruce. I'm looking at Bruce. There, Bruce is there. Tammy's there. Lori's there. Mackie. I don't know what Mackie's up to. Mackie's I'm, with Bruce's group though. So. Yeah, I, that's all. That's all right. I think she left the room. Um, okay. So, did uh, uh, anyone get my email? Did everyone get my email? I got okay. it. It has not been read. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I wrote you back right before we went on, so you probably didn't see it. No, I didn't. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to stop the recording. Wait, just a minute.